Officially Finner with your hosts Robin and Rudy, a podcast about family where we live, love, and laugh along the way. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Officially Fenner Podcast. Yeah. I am Robin Fenner, your host, and my co-host is Rudy. He is co-host here with Rudy. me, too. So. Co-host Rudy Ray. <laughs> so, if you're watching, you see I have a very interesting shirt on today. It is actually from the Queen's Ball uh, that was a Bridgerton event. Yeah. And I thought it was quite appropriate because today we are talking about... Queen Charlotte. So look, yes, I'm going to jump in because this is a trip. <laughs> so, right. So we've been married for going on 43 years. 44. 44. Going, I'm sorry, on, going on 44. We've been married for 40, 43 <laughs> years, going on 44. Now, it's safe to say there's not a lot that happens that surprises either of us. We kind of know each other. We kind of know how we do what we do, when we do what we do. But every now and then, curveball comes in. So I get up the other day and I said, oh, we got to do a podcast. And you know what we need to do the podcast on? She says, what? I said, Queen Charlotte. She says, what? <laughs> Queen Charlotte. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude is intense. Okay. It's intense. And it was interesting because what really that started to uncover was some common, some common factors in relationships. Before we talk about that, go on, jump in and say what you want to say. Well, I was going to say, for people who might not know about Queen Charlotte. Yeah, and that's a good idea. Yes. Queen Charlotte is, um, they've built it as Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story. So it is a piece that was taken from a character that was taken uh, from Bridgerton, the series that has been on Netflix for two seasons. And we're eagerly looking forward to season three. Um, And and, well, (laughs) clearly, clearly I'm not alone. If you suggested doing a podcast about, you know, Queen Charlotte and Bridgerton, he knows all about Bridgerton. That's funny. So anyway, but, um, so uh, this is the kind, so this is Queen Charlotte, who is like you know the boss of the ton basically, uh, and it is like I said a, a, a story taken from the Netflix series. Uh, it's fictional, but based on the real life care, real life people, I guess. Yeah. Um, King George the Third of England and his wife, who is Queen Charlotte. So anyway, so with that in mind, I just want to make sure people knew what we were talking about. Yeah, no, that's, to that's, that's very legit because I was completely <laughs> not going to talk about any of that, which is very key. So let me yeah. tell you, let me tell you, let me take a step back. At the core of all of this, I have a ton. I think if you listen to this podcast, at all, I got a lot of ministers that I think are fantastic. Um, Everybody doesn't always agree with all ministers, but I don't think there's anybody that's trash, man. I think all these guys have value. You may disagree with different things, but I believe God calls a lot of us to different things. And the people that he doesn't call us to, some of the people that we didn't call it, he didn't call us to don't understand us. And so I'm very careful about being critical and I listen and I'm fascinated by what I get if I listen long enough. Some people make me look crazy. What you mean is there's some nuggets in what people correct, say. Correct, okay, correct, correct. There's, there's almost always something in there. There's a nugget. Don't make no <laughs> joke. But I say all of that to say one of the many pastors that I've listened to that I do really care about and, and, and loved him dearly when he was alive was uh, the late Pastor Miles Monroe. And Miles Monroe taught me some things through YouTube sermons about partners and this helpmate. And I went in a little deeper. He talked about the value of a helpmate and stop being an idiot and go with the helpmate, roll with it. This is the person that at times is going to know more than you. It's going to be more than you. Y'all going to switch roles, but you got to be smart enough when to switch it. And I went a little deeper. I said, no, and I got to really know, I got to know her. I got to know her like I know myself. And that's kind of what I've done. And I started to practice a long time ago. Whatever she's watching, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to at least walk through the room and see what the vibe is on the show. Because I promise you, men, if you don't get what I'm saying, keep on living. What she watches a season two, three, or five of, you're going to hear it in conversations. You're going to see it played out. We cannot be immune to those things that we watch. Most guys that I know that are into sports, there are sports references. Military guys, I know there's military references. What you're around is what you become. That's just natural. Well, I think also, you know, it's, it's a matter of whether it, does art imitate life or does art imitate or does life imitate art? That age old question. So what you see is often a reflection of what's really happening in the real world and in the society. Very valid. And, and vice versa. Like I think we, it's a merging of the two. I yeah, tell people yeah. all the time, I've never had a big game that I wanted to see that she didn't know about it. She of usually course. knows who's playing in the Super Bowl and how they got there. 
She can usually tell you who the stars are, and she'll turn around and she'll tell you that she hates football. So, <laughs> I don't she, hate it. She, I just she don't, can, I'm she not can fan smoothly like you are, transition, but. but knows enough to know what she needs to know to know about me. And that's that's how this whole thing started. So I'm walking through the room. You're watching Charlotte. I'm kind of like walking through the room, but I'm walking slow. I'm walking slow because I saw the first season of Bridgerton with you. I kind of got into that a little bit. The second one I was watching with you enough to know. And I'm always once it. So once I start glancing in on her, both she and I have this one one common factor. that's amazing. We love the creative process. Yeah, we we like to talk about it. Listen, we have not generated one ounce of revenue in our lives on the entertainment business. And we subscribe to entertainment trade publications. (laughs) Because one day. (laughs) But but also because we love the creative process. Yeah. We love the players. We like to see how it all came together. What made that work? Why did they make that decision? Who decided that? Or who's the mind? Who's the genius behind that? I think uh, we talked about the uh, multicultural uh, impact of the MCU, of of the Marvel Universe. We were intrigued by that almost more about the creative process than anything else. It's the same thing with this. We're drawn to Chandra Rhymes and what's happening at Netflix and what's happening to television and entertainment in general because there's a lot of creativity that's been freed up and it's fascinating to watch it go and grow. Mm -hmm. Now with Queen Charlotte, as I watched this with her, I think my pause became a stop to a point where I was asking, hey, when are you watching the next episode of Queen Charlotte? (laughs) Because... Their relationship was fire. Hers and, and, King, and George. King George. And it's yes. interesting because um, England and its monarchy and all of that stuff is not at its highest, most popular point at this point. I would say popular, yes, but not for po- positive reasons. <laughs> popular for some pretty negative stuff going on right now. And that's interesting. Well, actually, it's kind of exciting because Charles was just um, coronated. Yeah. He just had coronation. But a lot of so. people saying, hey, man, yeah. I want my stuff back. So that's going well, on like there's two that with too. The, there's that's what I'm saying. Too. Yeah. So that might that's be it. what you're watching, but the rest of the world ain't watching it. Same, Net- Netflix man. launched Those Queen Charlotte the had. weekend of the coronation. So they right. knew the whole so world was watching. But yeah, you're right. There are a lot of, there's a lot of controversy right. about a lot of things historically. And, and, yeah. so, and so we've never, because of the tight ship that they run, We've never known anything really about the personalities. Not really. They've not been exposed and made available to us. I've wondered, how does Chandra Rhymes, they haven't gone after her for the images that she portrayed in this? Because she well, said some things it's that fiction. are not flattering. It's fiction. Well, it's based on characters, it? but it's fiction. And, you know, honestly, the royals, from what I read and understand, <laughs> um, is that you never, uh, never complain, never explain. So that's their whole thing. They don't talk about it. Yeah. So eventually it'll go away, you know, it's unless just, they, yeah. They just, okay, well, that's, that's, yeah. that's fascinating. That's, that's, yeah. not, that's not what we're here for. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but yeah. it is fascinating. When I looked at that, <laughs> yeah. I was amazed because in, an Ameri- in America, when you do a story about a family, they sue you. <laughs> and that's what, I mean, I'm just what I'm just thinking. Yeah. Almost every family, even a family does a story that they yeah. endorse yeah. somebody else in the family sues them. Yeah. We, yeah. Just don't, we just don't allow you to talk about me unless you give it my version of reality. And it was interesting to see these people create stuff on the Royals and they are so quiet and they are creating the image and they are creating these, these, these people, Chandra Rhymes and everybody else, they're creating the narrative about you. And if you don't say anything, we're not the smartest fish but in they, the tank. But we they, go tell with you what they, they, gave they tell you it's fiction. That's how they've branded that's it through. What, that's that's what Netflix says. They've branded it. It's fiction based on historical characters. But, but yo, yeah, so. if King George walked down the street in New York, <laughs> People would have words with him, and they talked to him based on the series. So anyway, so what was intriguing? There were several um, pieces and parts. Of this. Oh, and by the way, this didn't start with Charlotte. I wrote a few things down. <laughs> Dallas, Sex in the City, Hamilton, name your soap operas. There was a few of them. All H- My Children. All My Children, yeah. <laughs> HGTV, Dynasty. These are all through the ages shows that she's watched that I passed the TV in front of. And doggone it now when some of those shows come on. Don't you know I know the theme songs? It's because they were like, good TV how shows. How world do I know that song? <laughs> so anyway, just letting you know, this isn't new. This has been going on for 40, 43 years, solid. So, and, and Queen Charlotte, um, I was fascinated first by the whole arranged marriage thing, right? 
So they call it a arranged marriage. And we kind of, and this is what drew me to our podcast. Right, exactly. Because we kind of talked about arranged marriages and what I've deemed or named pseudo arranged marriages. Pseudo arranged marriages, in my mind, are when your cousins say, You need to talk to that dude over there. He kind of looked at you once or twice, and I think y'all got some stuff in common. And it isn't just a physical thing, but they've seen things, and they see where there's potential and a possible connection, a possible match. I call those pseudo-arranged marriages. And I said we said before in that, that's something to think about, because if you have a good circle around you, frequently, they'll know you better than you know yourself. Right. They'll know yeah, more about true. you than yeah. you know because you're living it. They're watching it lived out. Yeah, yeah. And they, they have opinions and they can see, they, they know what you like. They'll show you shoes in the shoe store that you didn't know you liked. Yeah, yeah. And what's really get crazy, if you have the right circle around you, like, and I do with you, you now buy me things mm-hmm. that when I first get them, I ain't feeling it. Mm-hmm. But you know what I learned? You love it. Shh, be quiet. <laughs> You've learned to love them. Don't talk. Because they're really good. Once you have it a minute, once you have it, in a month time, it's your favorite thing. Yeah. And so I've just learned. And so that's the value yeah, of having yeah, people yeah. around you that really know you. And then this is no different. So it's an arranged marriage. I don't, I'm not hinting or suggesting at all that the people that arranged those marriages were arranging them for the benefit of the individuals getting married. No. It was all about business transactions. It's a business transaction. And we got to get this yes. money right. Mm-hmm. We get this money right if we hook and up power. these people over here. And it's power. Yeah, we get this stuff right money here. Money and power. That's what drives it. Yep. So, 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 that was, so that was it. I don't know if you had any thoughts on a prearranged marriage before we move off of that because that was kind of crazy. No, I guess that was probably very common in that day. I mean, honestly, now, you, you call it prearranged or whatever. I, and I think sometimes just by introduction and people meeting what they consider to be the right people. Um. Isn't that for what all the dating apps are anyway? Well, yeah, you're, you're looking yeah. for Mr. or Ms. Wright or whatever. And, and yeah, they're just doing an algorithm to yeah. what people did before. That ain't nothing True. new. I mean, so everybody, like, everybody's looking for Mr. or Ms. Wright or whatever. You know, they're looking for that right person, that right, right partner right. or whatever. Um, but it's just kind of with the, the intention behind it, I think, it makes a difference. Yeah, you know, so to ask, to make in money. our case, they're trying to find a, a good match for the purposes of finding just a good match, a good person for this, right. for the person you love and your family or to, to know, meet, whatever, move along with. In this case, though, it was, it was transactional as, um, like I said, most things were to continue the kingdom. Okay. To continue yeah. the, the royal families, kind of the money, the because, power. Because so that's Queen what that was. Charlotte in this implied that she didn't even know what was up. Why am I here? Right. Why'd you choose me? She had an independent streak from the time we we met, we met her. Right. Yeah. She's a young woman and uh, probably a, a, a teenager almost. Is I what she looks like. Yeah. I also find it kind of intriguing that I didn't know that there was a little question mm-hmm. about her ethnicity. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Oh, see. Well, okay, this, this is the same <laughs> thing, right? I can tell you that I can tell yeah. you about Joe Namath and the Jets back in the day, and I can tell you about. Um, my man, uh, uh, playing, going over to the Jets now. I can tell you things about football players and football teams. The Queen, nah, it's not my deal. So yeah. when I'm looking at this, this is from a historical, I'm, I'm realizing that some of this is bleeding over into history, for real. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. The Queen was solid, they didn't know, so- she, whoa, hey, hold on. So that was deep. Yeah, yeah, that came back. And Chandra Rhymes yeah. just said, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to make a move on this. Yeah, she ran with that. Yeah. And I'm going to run with mm-hmm. it. And I'm going to make her a little more questionable than perhaps the public ever knew. I'm going to give you the whole thing. And I'm like, oh, that's so deep. That yeah. was deep when she went with that. I, I, I found it in, incredibly intriguing. Yeah. So we move on uh, through it. And uh, a hey, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, we're not going to give you the whole thing. I think it's so deep. I, I don't think we could give you the whole deal. But just say spoiler alert. So just know we're going to talk about a few things with it because I think it's important. Uh, to, to get the point across with, with what we saw in the show. Um, I was watching it, and I don't know where this came from, but I called the queen a trench girl. Mm-hmm. And okay, and by that you mean? I, when I said a trench girl, honestly, I referred to her trench girl, and this is what really drew me. The first time I saw something in it where he got into, the king was having some struggles, let's just say. Mm-hmm. And the queen got all in it. And I mean, got all in it like this. Um, 
I can relate because the last year for me has been a health nightmare for most people. For me, it was a health challenge. I wouldn't call it a nightmare. And part of the reason was because I had you. Because you made the whole <laughs> thing like, man, I don't know. It was crazy. I, I, I don't. So the whole episode that I went through, I was never physically alone. You would not allow me to be alone unless I was sitting in a hot garage because I couldn't get cold. <laughs> then you leave me out there. It's like, I don't blame you. I left me too. It was 90 degrees and I had on a hoodie. So like, now nah, I'm out. But you never allowed me radiation. I was never by myself. Uh, chemo, I was never by myself. Surgery, I was when I woke up, you were there. When I went to sleep, you were there. When I, Every aspect of it, you were there. And I felt like anything else you could do, you would have done. That's a trench girl. And where, for me, see, it's funny. I grabbed that out of the sky. And evidently, I didn't create it. I didn't make up the phrase of the word. So evidently, I heard it someplace. <laughs> but what I thought about with it is I always go back to this. There was some movie I wish I knew because I try to give him credit and I can't remember. Where there was a war, there was a Middle Eastern sect that was, that was fighting in this war. They got in the foxholes, and when you get in the foxhole, you take one leg and you tie it down. Mm. You, tie the, you tie the leg down. That means you can't get out unless you cut the rope. And they're all doing this in an effort to express and communicate commitment to this cause. Right. <clears throat> to have somebody with you that's committed to your cause and finds a way to express it <laughs> or communicate it is intense. That's why I tell people who are hesitant, young people, we avoid love because of the potential pain, embarrassment, and all that comes with it. But the flip side, if you find the trench girl, if you find the guy that you want to get in the foxhole with, if you find the person who not only cares for you mentally, but physically, but then shows you there's no limits, what we got to do, let's go. That makes all of this it's not a question. That's what we all, I believe, live for. That's what we all desire. But we're also incredibly afraid. Because many of us grow up in households where we see heartbreak. Mm -hmm. We see relationships where people's <laughs> hearts are ripped out of their chest. And when you see that, it's like, well, that ain't happening to me. But the flip side of it is you never get to see it. I have a friend, we're talking about prenups. When... um um. Uh, rich dude just got engaged to oh, his girl. Jeff Bezos. When Bezos yeah. got uh, engaged, when that announcement yeah. came across, you said, wow, I wonder what that prenup looked like. And I had another woman who I work with who's just dealt with a divorce. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that. And the one thing that we talk about, and she says she would never have any relationship with anybody without some kind of an agreement like that. Mm -hmm. And I said, what I'm really happy about is you had the opportunity to have at least one relationship where you didn't. <laughs> And she looked at me, she said, what? I said, I, 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 I want my desire for everybody because God has just taught me how much he loves people. So I'm, I, I, I'm learning to love people in that same manner. I want them to be unabated, uninhibited, where God wants them to be. And that's that love that's just stupid, that's so risky. I have so much stuff at risk with you. It's just like everything, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ain't no bridge. Ain't no, you know, they talk about business. They say yeah. burn the bridges. Ain't no bridge. Ain't no boat. Ain't no nothing. It's a crocodile with moats in it. You cannot go back. But that kind of commitment and that kind of abandon of all logic and common sense. Most guys I know that's married, been married long as me. They got money stashed somewhere. Mm -hmm. Some even have a side. And women, a lot of women so, yeah, yeah, women, women too. And most, so, and a lot of yeah. people we know, a, a lot of people that we know, and I don't know them personally, but I can promise you, just life being life, they got a piece, they got a person on the side, they got at least an old phone number, something like that. Does to risk it all is something about that that's just like that's intense, and that's what Queen Charlotte reminded me. Of. It's like being naked. Almost worse. I mean, I mean, really, because you just don't have you just don't have anything, you know, nothing that you're hiding. Yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. But it's like yes, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. it is, and it's an incredible. But she, didn't, but she didn't have anything if you really think about it to lose, because her brother basically said agreed well, for up. her to marry the king. Well, hold up. What she doesn't, because she gave up everything when she walked in the door. 
She, what was she, she giving up? She gave up. Okay, your so life she ain't had, your life no more. And what her she life wasn't her life before. What she because her up. brother, her brother gave her up. But then <laughs> no. she gave herself up because she didn't climb. She over the wall. She made a decision. Hold on. She got to make a decision right. about climbing over That's the wall. Right. And, yes. so, and so, because the king was free enough, he was freer than everybody else around him. Actually, because he trip. did have some issues. Some okay, everybody knows. He has some mental problems, so we will we will put that part out there. If you right. haven't watched the show, with, right. he had mental problems, and this is a real life thing, and so um, that was that's a fact, and that's that's very central yes. to the show. So so yes, he gave her. He said he allowed, he gave her the freedom to climb over the wall, and basically yeah. she was trying to climb the wall, and then she made the decision not to. So she had the freedom there. She didn't have the freedom in the first place. And I think the word you wrote down to was do. leadership. Yeah, and that's well, when did, yeah, right. she took leadership back. Yeah. Because, yeah, because she was able to do that because then. Mm-hmm. she had the option to get on up out of here the only thing is what would have happened if she had climbed over that wall i don't know but, but because back in those option. days but she you know, had the things option. were different yeah she had the option she could have yeah. climbed over the wall and basically i think he was saying yo you climb you climb yeah i ain't chasing over the wall yeah i'm here i think i'm here and this is this is it because to be honest, I think he was kind of happy with his life. He had some issues, but he was happy with the things he, he decided to do. To, he said, I like farming. I like, you yeah, know, looking at the stars, to, those kinds of yep. things he enjoyed yep. doing. So, you know, he was. And we talked yeah. about, we talked about this um, when we talked about leadership in a relationship because it's fascinating because I've seen a lot of brothers who read about the men being the head of the household and different things in the Bible. And it's kind of like, man, y'all notice a lot more to that, right? You're reading the line and you're running with it. So I know guys that's alcoholics. Mm -hmm. They talk about being the head of a household. I'm like, "Uh, I don't think so, chief. I don't think you're reading the whole thing. I I don't think the context, I think your context is a little confused. Mm -hmm. I know guys who have girls on the side or have known. And they talk about being the head of the house. I'm like, no, I ain't. <laughs> what are you doing with that? You're stomping all over the Bible with that. You can't take that out of context like that. And so I think what happens is being the head of something is knowing how to roll with who is the best person for this job and for this time, for this season. Um, for the last year of my life, you have been the leader. You've been a leader because I couldn't do Diddly. I couldn't even think about mm. what to eat. I couldn't think about what to drink. The other, only other time I thought about it, um, <laughs> this was what this was funny, not funny. I had a triple hernia surgery. I'll never forget it. And I was sitting on the sofa because the, not, the, the uh, anesthesia was wearing off and I couldn't even move. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I couldn't do anything. And a hot water tank bro- broke. Oh, yeah. That was a hot terrible. water tank broke and you had to take it. <laughs> Yeah. Everything. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even talk because I was not <laughs> coherent enough to talk. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. And my back was to everything. So I got all these people behind me working <laughs> and moving. And it's making me crazy because I can't turn around. But that was a place where I was forced to relinquish all hints of leadership. Could yeah. not lead at all. I'm telling you, I was not coherent enough even to make a suggestion. So all I could do was sit there. <laughs> Like somebody that that had been tranquilized in a chair, of, and I couldn't move. That was the first time. And then we came back to this last year. Mm-hmm. This last year was a long, more pronounced thing, where it required you to be in a leadership role for a solid few months, if not almost a year, where mm-hmm. I just couldn't function. Mm-hmm. It was all I could just to handle and deal with the treatment. Right. Right? That was a full-time job. Um, everything else, and I mean everything else, you had to drive it. Well, now, I, go on. I and I'm saying, what's fascinating to me is how much fun you're having giving back some of that. Well, and you've slowly yeah. tried to give some of it back. <laughs> say, hey, you need to talk to. Hey, you need to. And that's well, been like, well, you're getting better. I mean, you've gotten better, so that's a good right. thing. Because, no, no, but I'm just I'm talking about the beauty of the transition of leadership. Yeah, yeah that's the, the, e- the ebb and the flow, right? Basically, and just yeah. get so, to that point where it's it, we know leadership is not uh, a single thread forever um, Supreme Court justice title. Well, is it actually is it leadership or is a partnership? 
And I kind of think, I kind of struggle with the leadership word in a relationship. And I know some people might disagree with this because I know a lot of people talk about, you know, the man's leader of the house, blah, 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 whatever. I just think that relationships are more partnerships. And that might ebb and flow still in terms of the amount of support one gives the other at different times. And one the other thing I say is that marriage is not 50-50. It's not going to be a partnership that's always half and half because as you were just Sorry. describing, you know, there are times when you have to give, one person has to give 100%. If you're going to keep it together, you're going to have to do everything. So here's what I'll say. You know, but... In the, terms but the, of leadership, you're talking yeah. about the leadership of the, 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 the um, biblical references to men and the household. I think, ultimately, no matter what happens, the book of account talks about God looking in my eyes and asking me questions about what I did. I am convinced, and I'm not trying to put no conviction on anybody else. I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. I believe that God is going to ask me questions about my responsibility towards you. Did I make your life better? Your weight loss, baby, that's mine. I went in after that. Because well, I knew you know, but, how much healthier you would be. But if and I didn't I knew, go along with it, then that's what? Right, that's yeah, right. You so had to saying. relinquish your power and I had let to, me I lead. just started to stay on this side of the wall. You had to, you had to <laughs> lead me. You yeah. had to allow me to lead in that. Just like 43 years ago, I've told this story before, and I'm going to tell you all this story again right now. 43 years ago, within the first two weeks of being married, I want to scramble an egg. I go to scramble an egg, and I say, where's the grease? You say, we don't have any grease. You say, well, where's the grease can? You say, we don't have a grease can. I say, well, how can you cook? You say, we don't cook with grease. We cook with Pam. I say, Pam is your sister. <laughs> we don't cook with Pam. How do we cook? You say, we cook with Pam. You hand me a spray can of Pam. I look at you and I say, oh, this right here is crazy. I need some grease. And I went out to the store. I go out and this is, how, this is young and stupid. It's a bad way to go through life. I'm going from store to store trying to find a grease can in grease. And the people are looking at me like, this boy must be hot. <laughs> this is, I don't know if this don't look like no weed. This is stronger than weed right here. And I come home in frustration, get the Pam, and I scramble the egg. I am convinced that although it was a stubborn and the worst display of what I'm describing in my entire life, that, that one change to my diet changed everything. Because not mm -hmm. cooking in grease, not frying everything, because it changed the way I, we prepare food. That's why I'm a 65-year-old cancer survivor. Because mm -hmm. at 300 whatever pounds, whatever I would have been had I been eating that all the time, I ain't surviving all of that stuff I just went through. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to happen. No way, no how. So I have lived out this leadership deal and understanding when you have to... And again... It, leadership, I'm not saying somebody is standing like the captain of a ship, <laughs> go left, go right, grab the, grab the pull of sail, do this, do that, barking instructions. That's not leadership. Leadership to me is being able to look on a granular level and a 30,000 foot level to see where we're going. Are we going in the right place? Are we doing the right things for our kids to end up where they should end up? Are we now doing the right things for our grandkids to end up with? Are we doing the right things for you to end up where you want to end up? Am I, are we doing the right things that when God looks at us one day and says, oh, well done. Good job. Good job out of you too. That's what leadership is. Leadership isn't a day-to-day -day me telling you, you shouldn't have eggs. You should have sausage. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Nobody yeah, needs okay. that, that kind of um, deal. So I do think the word gets, we get confused about what it is. And we get confused about who's running what. I do know of homes and households. I've seen women who are the dominant voice. Mm -hmm. I've seen Places where men are the dominant voice. I've never seen a place where a person's voice was the dominant voice and it was run like it made sense. Every mm -hmm. one of those situations I've ever seen, if it's one dominated by the other, it's crazy. Because so, nobody is that good. Nobody's that smart. Nobody has all the answers like that. It's got to be every couple that I know, every situation that I know, where their marriages, and these are marriages, I'm always talking about 10 years or more. I'm sorry. No, no disrespect to under 10, but you got to get 10 in before you even in the game to me. But 10 years and after, then I'm looking at these marriages and I'm looking at these relationships like, oh, that's pretty cool to really roll with that. Because we're with him and I'm noticing that she's doing all the leading and all the talking. And now we're over here doing this and I know he's doing it. And so the leadership is flowing. There's a flow. There's a seasonal. 
there's sessions, there's events that are driving the leadership. And that's like, that's how that works. But that's what happens when you have a helpmate. The helpmate gonna know more than you sometimes. And you need to <laughs> shut up and let them help. Let them do what they do. It ain't help like the movie to help like people ironing your clothes. It's somebody <laughs> helping in terms of you don't need to be going that way. You need to be going this way. And you need to say, okay. Which is what Charlotte did. She did it. She did. She would calm him down. Yeah. When he would kind of get ready to go into a, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but a moment. A moment. A moment. Yeah. Where he would uh, begin to kind of um, not be able to control his, you know, behavior. Yes. Um, and she would almost take his hand and just kind of steady him a bit. Oh, you hate it when they touch you. And mess you all up when they touch you. You're fine <laughs> she until would you take get his touched. Hand I, I'm gonna. <laughs> and steady him a bit and prepare him. And she would always say, I am here. Yeah. I am here. And she demanded at one point um, because actually uh, when they got married, he, he had a surprise for her. that Her wedding night, she was very excited about that and everything. He took her to another house and said, this is your home. And I'm going to go stay over here at Q. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, what do you mean? We're not going to live together. And he says, yeah, that's how it's going to be. I do that over there and you stay over here. And, and, and what he was actually doing at that time was trying to protect her from who he actually was. Yeah. He was trying to protect her and she didn't know. And she was angry and she was trying to figure this all out. So long story short, she gets to a point where she asks him, you know, you know, I can deal with anything. Just do you love me? Yeah, you know, and and that was a really telling moment because he could never tell her that he didn't love her, yeah. and eventually that's when he came out and said, "Yeah, yeah he confessed that he, at, yeah. at the wall, man. Yeah, I got lit up. And yeah, we were standing at the wall, and I lost my mind looking at you right there. Yeah, and uh, that was that. Yeah, that was pretty intense scene. That's that's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you 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 had during the course of talking about this, you stumbled on uh, Pastor Kerry Turner. T yeah. Talk a little bit about that, because that was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, well, you know, our friend Tanya sent us uh, this um, these comments that she had made on a podcast. A podcast is called uh, Dear Future Wifey, which I've grown to really like as I look at other podcasts. Um, and But she was talking about um, what she can do, what she's looking for in a husband and how she, she needs actually, as you would say, the, the, the leadership mm -hmm. and where you're going and how are we going to get there and, and those kinds of characteristics that she's looking for as she's, you know, a woman is looking for typically and searching for a husband. Um and but she talks about how she, uh, he can he does that part and she's saying no matter what he has I can take that and multiply it. Yeah. So there is this dual role and mm -hmm. and the two of them working together mm -hmm. that makes sense and is what she is suggesting people look for. But you know she said no matter what you get I can take this and I can make it tenfold I can make it fivefold I can double I can do this with what you have but I need you to also be there and you to Which fulfill so the role that you have. That's like so yeah in sports analogy. <clears throat> that's like a cheerleader that's one of the best wide receivers on the team. <laughs> exactly. Right? She got the palm palm cheering. Yeah, yeah. And the next thing you know, she's spiking the ball and ends up like, what? Yeah. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, that was impressive because you do want somebody to support you. If, you, if you're a husband, if you're a dad, and you're committed to taking your whole family ship I'll call it as far as, as y'all can go and to maximize all your opportunities. You're not just looking for somebody that says, yeah, and agrees with you. It's kind of cool when the person that you're with has an idea that's like, oh, we need to go with that. It's kind of cool when that person can turn around and take your idea and say, yeah, we need to go with that. Mm -hmm. And does whatever needs to happen to forward to advance the ball that that is cool and when i heard her say that i wish more men could hear that and we all at times could learn to appreciate that because sometimes in this insanity and especially with social media and everything else we are um looking for this submissive uh almost coward and it's like that's not real i don't need anybody mm -hmm. like that nobody needs anybody like that i need somebody that's in the trench with me respecting what i'm saying but at the same time helping me to make sure and checking me if what i'm saying ain't right mm -hmm. that's that's like money that's uh i mean and that's 
that's what I've successfully had with you, and that's come to benefit me tremendously. Well, you make each other stronger by doing that. <laughs> yeah. You real, you know, iron sharp as iron. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and yeah, and it's kind of like you know, you always think about your boys, if guys. I'm talking to you. You always think about your boys when you say, um, "You don't suffer no fools. Or you don't want to be around this, but around that." It's kind of the same thing with your wife. You want her to be like that's like your your your, your top your lieutenant. That's the one that uh, whispers in your ear uh, when you make a mistake. Helping to correct you. Um, you know, we've been places before and I give her to eat something. She'll say, I don't think you want to eat that. And she'll say it in a, in a respectful way. That, okay, nobody else here. And I've learned, don't eat that. Whatever she said, there's something going on there. And later on, she'll tell me it was a taste. It was something in it that she knew I was not going to be, I was going to be, I didn't have reacts to something. But it's kind of like, you learn after a while. I'm like, nah, I trust her. The other person, oh man, come on, taste it. You'll love it. Like she said, I don't eat that. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I need people like that. And you need people like that in your life. I'll, I'll never forget one of the most uh, hurtful moments in sports, and I, and I keep drawing stuff back to that. Um, there was a fight that Ty, when, uh, when, when Mike Tyson lost, um, I can't remember if it was the, um, shoot, y'all know the, 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 the big fight that Mike lost. I can't remember if it was that or the very, his very last fight, which I had the pleasure of seeing. I remember. Pleasure. <laughs> there was, yeah, the, I mean, the pleasure of seeing him fight. I had I the know. honor oh. to see him fight one time, and I that was you. it. That was tough. So anyway, <laughs> but, the, but the point was, was I remember him looking at his corner and the cornerman asked him, what do you see, Mike? And I almost, no, I was at home. It wasn't the one we saw. I was at home and I almost threw my shoe at the TV. I said, the cornerman is asking Mike, what does he see? Mm -hmm. You need to be telling Mike what you see. And I realized this is what happens when you strip down your leadership. And this is what happens when you strip down your cycle, your circle. Now, you've surrounded yourself with people who agree with you that don't have value because they don't really know what you needed people to know because the people that really know what you needed them to know would not always agree with you. So you got rid of them, and now you need answers, and you can't find answers. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. And it was like it was heartbreaking because I realized, wow, he's done this to himself. And now, Buster Douglas, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I, I redeem, redeem myself. Sorry, <laughs> fellas. And women who know the fight game and pay attention. When he was fighting Buster Douglas, his cornermen looked at him, and I could have swore, I, I know for a fact, they looked at him in one round, and they said, what do you see, Mike? What do you see, champ? And my heart broke, because at that point, I realized he's at, the, he, he's at his lowest point, because they can't answer him, and he's removed everybody in his life that's of value, all his people in his trenches, everybody that was with him, they're all gone, and he's got a bunch of people standing on top of the trench, yelling down at him, taking money from him, but they're doing nothing to help him, and it just, it was so crushing. Yeah, yeah. So crushing. Okay, so you had some interesting thoughts about the, f the final scene. Yes. Uh, and when they were together. And it kind of ties into what we've been talking about already in terms of being in the trenches together. Yeah. But uh, tell us about that. And it was funny because it's, it's been this whole thing has been funny because so, there were so many things with, with this with Robin that I saw before she saw. And, and, and some of it was sometimes, I don't know, she wants to be... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a teenager or what, and she wants to try to stay up late and watch stuff. <laughs> and Robin can't stay up late. So she I fall puts asleep. Stuff on and she goes straight no, to sleep. No, because the wrong thing. I've been busy all day long, you know, shifting gears like somebody driving a stick shift. And so, yeah, I'm sleepy by yeah. 10 o'clock. But I try to watch, and, and eventually I did get it all. It's eventually, just, but she goes to sleep. I just couldn't binge it. So, <laughs> so, excuse me, I'm trying to stay up while she stays up. No, I'm not trying to stay up. I stay up. And I'm watching it, and I'm turning around and ask her a question, and I realize, she's asleep. <laughs> and so, but anyway, there were several things that I, so one of the first things I noticed, and I'm just going to give some, some, some little uh, credit uh, nuggets here, as we kind of, I guess we're starting to close out here. Um, a sequel and a prequel at the same time. That was genius. I looked at Robin and I said, okay, wait, wait, I'm a Marvel guy. So we always do sequels. And occasionally okay, so we go back and we do a prequel. I'm a Star Wars guy. We do the same thing with that. I ain't never seen anybody do a sequel and a prequel at the same time. Yeah, yeah. She aged the characters. Except for Dark Shadows, which I used to watch too. But go okay. on. So I wasn't around. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. But I wasn't around back then. So oh, you I were. Oh, no, you weren't around. No, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, that yeah. was pre root off. Yeah, was pre yeah, off. yeah. But, you know, you did have these times that changed. Yes. You know, so. I just, but, that, just anyway. that was just deep. But anyway. <laughs> um. um that's, yeah. that's genius. 
That's <laughs> genius to do both of those. Because I looked and I said, wait, but this is the third season of the Bridgerton space. Am I saying, can I say that right? Well, the Bridgerton franchise. Well, they've had two Bridgerton uh, seasons, seasons right. one and two. And then this is a story that was just to take a story that was created based on characters in Bridgerton. But season three of Bridgerton is still to come. But this is a part of the Bridgerton family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it so is. So what they did with the sequel prequel concept is they advanced the timeline. So we expect this fourth season to be... Third. But, no, four, no, I'm sorry. This, this fourth Bridgerton piece <laughs> that comes out to be at the timeline where it ends because the most compelling scene yes. at the end of that show, my man goes to his hiding place. And that was deep. Stop right there for a second. Because we all have a hiding place. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to talk to guys that I know because I don't want them to go to a hiding place that's away from everybody. Because in a lot of those places, that's where, I don't mean to get really dark, but that's where suicide and things like that happens. Because you're not listening to anyone other than yourself, and it's only your voice. And that's not what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. I suggest help. I would suggest um, counseling. I would suggest all of those things. And as a matter of fact, when we're done, I want to make sure that we post, there's a lot of counseling and suicide prevention mm -hmm. lines and places. Mm -hmm. I want to post that. I'm hoping you can post that at the end of this episode because if anybody is listening and they're looking at it and we're talking about this and we're talking about the love aspect of it and they're talking about the mental health side of it, that's something that we, we just, we did not address. We're not talking about that because it's not what our, our thing really is, but there's a lot of professional people out there to address sure. that. And that yeah. needs to be addressed because mm -hmm. it's for real. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're not living in the age where we tuck people away like they did in that time. And, that exactly. era. No. and there's a lot of people that I know grew up with all kinds of issues and we tucked them away. Yeah. And that was wrong. We didn't, we didn't, some of it, it was wrong. Not that we did anything maliciously. We didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Some of it was out of ignorance. Some of it was out of the economics of it. We don't have those barriers anymore. We can do things now. We can point people to places and have places to help people. And, and I encourage you to, if you feel yourself like you need it, stop tripping. Yeah, it's o help. it's okay to get help. help. I encourage we have, getting help. I got help. too much stuff around yeah. me. I've had too many issues <laughs> for anybody with any of that to hesitate. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anybody else to talk to, to call, you reach out to me. I ain't going to shame you. I ain't going to judge you. We're going to help you find what you need. We don't have it, but we know people that do. We know people, right? <laughs> yeah. You understand? We know people. So reach out mm -hmm. and, and, let us, and, let us, and let us talk and help. But he goes to his hiding place. And his hiding place is under a bed. Mm -hmm. and it takes a minute to figure out what's going on because I don't think you at first realized it was under the bed. Yeah, he had so many interesting things that he did in he that did. home. It, it was hard. To, it was kind of, it's kind of a darker movie yes. set. Yes. So to keep up with where things are and what's going on, you know, you have to see it maybe a little bit And this is the ultimate more. trench girl. She get up under the bed with him. She gets under the bed with him and she holds his hand. Mm -hmm. It's like, if this where you are, this where I am. And I say all of this to, I know couples that are struggling in relationships. And part of the problem is you don't want my junk. If you got me, you got my junk. Mm -hmm. My yep. past, mm -hmm. my present, you got my future, you got my health, good, bad, or indifferent. You got my junk. What I want you to be is in here with me. I didn't know to ask that. Yeah, I would never ask mm -hmm. for that. But having gone through that, it's like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. And I understand now, Robin, Robin had a health episode a few years ago. And her whole view of me changed after, and I never understood it. Mm -hmm. I was just doing me. Doing me is doing you. That's what I do. I don't understand. Yeah, scrambled your egg. Why would, you not, why would I not make you? Why, why would I not make your egg? Why would I? Why would, why, you I wasn't working. Of course I wasn't working. Why would, why would I be? <laughs> I didn't understand it until you did all the stuff for me. They're like, oh, this is a trip right here. Okay, okay, okay. You're seeing things out of people that you hoped they would do, but you didn't have a way to test what they would do. It's kind of like I said about fight or flight. You don't know what you have until you're in it. 
Yeah. Well, you a lot of, most people get married for. I mean, there are some people who do get married, and they know there's a lot that mm. they have to work with, with you know, some issues that their partners facing you know, yeah. whatever. but most people get married and they're looking happily ever after you know the wedding like you know how many bridesmaids and how much is it going to cost and where i'm going to have it and all this kind of, but there's like after the wedding and that's where life really begins yeah, yeah uh, it is. you know so you have to uh, when you take those vows and you say in sickness or in health uh you say them but you know you really think what does that really mean and you know if that person is there for you you're there for them yeah so that's really the thing yeah and so and and i think i think if you I wanted to talk about Charlotte and I asked Robin to do it for this episode primarily because it's really, it's an incredible uh, um, view of relationships. It's a, it's an incredible view of relationships and we have the beauty of looking at something that in, occurs over in, in a large period of time in this little four hour, five hour window, whatever the episodes took. Mm -hmm. But it allows us to have fuel to creatively move forward in our relationships. And to look at it and examine what worked, what didn't work, what was a good idea, what was a bad idea. Um, I thought I thought it was well done in terms of Chandra, just her writing. Like I said, the stuff, the angles, the thought process. She's um, a genius. She is. She is. She really genius. is. Yeah. I understand, and I'm not saying. And sometimes people with these with with um, Chandra, um, even Faggy and. Uh, um, um, uh, Lee, 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 um, Lee Daniels. Yeah. Um, um, my guy over at uh, Marvel. Um, Kevin. Kevin. Uh, like, like, uh, Kevin Feige is the last name. I'm talking yeah, about yeah. John uh, Favreau. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These guys are incredibly creative people. And if you want to get into all of that politics and you get into all that stuff, you can. I'm just not. I know who God is. I know who I am. So I don't get into that stuff. I get into the pure creativity that they do, and what they do is genius. And what she's doing is changing how we watch this woman and what she's done with Netflix. And as a part of the Tyler Perry crew, the uh, Favreau crew, the, all of these people I'm watching. And what they have basically done is they made us say that TV is not that important and we can stream. Mm -hmm. And they go with somebody and we go with them. And we starting to, we're starting to go to Disney Plus or to Netflix or to Hulu or whoever these people say, Apple Plus. We're going with these guys, and they, in fact, are creating so much product, mm -hmm. so creatively, until we said, okay, I'm good. And that's that's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. Uh, so so I applaud her. Uh, creative and, oh, this last thing. We were looking at this and breaking down the episodes and leadership, going back to the leadership one last time. What we found that was crazy was Chandra doesn't write everything. No, she doesn't write everything, but she's in charge. But it's crazy, though. <laughs> it's crazy, though, because yeah, yeah. she is a leader that understands you don't always have to lead and do everything. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What I challenge you to do is to go back and watch the, the full season of Charlotte and tell me who wrote what. Yeah. Ah. Without reading the credits. You can't. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I found yeah, the yeah. same thing with mm -hmm. um, my, my favorite show, uh, um, um, Man Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Different writers, different directors, different producers. You can't tell. Well, that goes back to the concept of leading from behind uh, and, and servant leadership. Mm. Because those are the people who don't have to be out in front awesome. doing everything all the time, you know, visibly, but they are encouraging they from, from behind. They yeah, can run right, it. right. They can do it. Yeah. They can yeah. step back. Mm -hmm. 30,000 foot view. I'll advise, direct, do your thing. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Right. All right. Mm. Well, you took that episode. Wow, sorry. Well, no, it's okay. No, 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 it's okay. No, oh no, no. God. I'm, I'm I glad you came that. up with it. You talk. <laughs> yeah, and I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that, that you were so interested in that. Oh, my so, goodness. Yeah. You know, that was great. on Charlotte. <laughs> Please, Charlotte. I'll never, see, I'll never see the monarchy again the same. <laughs> I'm messed up. You'll be fine. <laughs> and they will continue to give us real life stories. But anyway. <laughs> you watching the nice basketball games. I wonder what Charlotte would do. In this situation, yeah, she's, she's sitting around and fan them away. That's what she would do, fan them right away. Next, <laughs> next, because she was a very self directed person. She was. I, yeah, I love yeah, everything about yeah, it. I love, yeah. I love, I love just her. I, nah, his, yeah. I'm taking this back. Yeah, and I, th I just one final word, my end, and that is you see her in Bridgerton, but then you see this part of her in this story. 
it really helps you understand oh how gosh. she got to be what she, that who she was. That this, this changed It just changed makes you look everything. at her and totally different things. So everything Bridget, looked whacked and crazy in yeah. episode. We need to go back and watch season one because yeah. now it makes sense. Yeah, you saw a little bit of George here and there, but oh. not really. So yeah, go back to it and watch yeah, that. But that's good. And of course, continue to watch the upcoming season. There you go. So, all right. So to, I think that wraps up today's episode. Do right? your thing, Chandra. <laughs> Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. On Officially Fin. Y'all be blessed. Officially Finna thanks you for joining us. Please subscribe and hit that like button.